Hello everyone this is part 28 of what if Naruto's mother was Sunid Senju, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the intro. Previously on Hope of the Senju clan. When the pillars moved away, Yugito became visible and was lying on her back, barely conscious and unable to move. At the same time Genma made his way over to the two genin, jumping over the large wooden tentacles that were covering most of the destroyed arena. When he saw the kneeling and panting Naruto and the restrained Yugito, he knew that the battle was finally over. Ni Yugito of Kumo is unable to continue battling, this battle is over. Genma declared as he shouted to the audience. Quote, comma, dot. The winner is Senju Naruto of Kanoa. Disclaimer, I do not and will not ever own Naruto or any of its characters. I only own the characters I created myself. In the arena, when Genma declared Naruto the winner there was silence, as many couldn't believe that the battle between the two blondes was finally over. Others on the other hand were still in shock at how they had actually witnessed, with their own eyes, the re-emerges of the legendary bloodline limit of the Shodai Hokage, Mokuten would release. Not to mention, seeing Naruto use Hokage Shiki Jijin Jutsu Kaku and Nitin Sushu, Hokage-style 60-year-old technique in closed hermitage entering society with bliss bringing hands, one of the Shodai's most famous techniques. Eventually after a few moments, the audience finally got over their shock, and the stadium exploded into a thunderous applause and cheers, the cheers were so loud that they could be heard all over the village. In the audience. He did it. Ino yelled excitedly as she raised her arms into the air and cheered loudly. Yes. Cried Kiba as he pumped his fist into their air. Well done Naruto, Yamato thought with a smile, as he was quite proud of his student. Nice. Thought Kushina with a large smile. Naruto has certainly come a long way in a short time, Kuranai remarked. Yeah, I have to admit, there were moments where I thought he might actually lose, commented Asuma. Who was impressed with how Naruto was able to use Hokage Shiki Jijin Jutsu Kaku and Nitin Sushu and suppress the Nibi. Unreal, Naruto did it, he defeated Yugito, again, said a wide-eyed Omoi, while his blonde teammates and we just stared down at the arena with a large frown. That was Wakyo, said Killer B inside his mind, while still reeling over the shock that Naruto could use Mokuten. Things are going to be a lot harder for that boy B, now that he has revealed he can use Mokuten. Your brother and the other villagers will most likely target him now, since he poses too much of a threat to them to be left alone, said Hachibi. You think, replied Killer B sarcastically, since he knew his brother better than anyone and knew what he was probably thinking now. That boy, he needs to be dealt with, now, thought the Suna team sensei, who had a large angry frown on his face. Ho ho ho, it seems that I have won our bet Enrai Sama, said the fire daimyo with an amused smile when he saw the surprised look on his fellow daimyo's face. So it would seem, replied the lightning daimyo after getting over his surprise and now had an amused smile. You were indeed correct Kasai Sama, that boy he is quite special, to think that he would have the same ability as the Shodai Hokage. Naruto is incredible, said Rurichio with an excited look, since she couldn't believe how strong Naruto was. That he is, he's quite a remarkable young man, added Madam Shijimi with a large smile as she continued to clap for Naruto. Unbelievable, said Aruka, who like his fellow teachers, was shocked with what they had seen. I never dreamed that Naruto could be so strong, let alone he could use Mokuten like the Shodai Hokage. Yeah, yelled Konohamaru, who was jumping up and down on his seat and cheering loudly. Nisan did it, he won. Did you see him use Mokuten, and how he used it to beat that girl? Asked Udon amazement. Yeah, he was awesome. Said one young boy. That Yugito girl was incredible too, did you see how she used that strange chakra and nearly defeated him? Both of them are spectacular, said one young girl in awe. I told you, I told all of you that Naruto Ni was awesome shouted Konohamaru, who was ecstatic over Naruto's win and couldn't believe how strong his elder brother figure was. In the finalist box, I don't believe it, Senju beat Yugito, said a shocked Karui. Jeez, what a troublesome fight, muttered Shikamaru as he looked over the destroyed arena and the two exhausted blondes and was once again glad he forfeited his match. Shit, what do we do now? asked a worried Kankuro in a low voice. 
If he gets near Gara when the invasion starts he could. I know, interrupted Temari who was also worried. But the plan can still work, look at how exhausted he is. All we have to do is keep him away from Gara until he fully transforms. Once his transformation is complete, not even Senju will be able to stop him. Yay all right, replied Kankuro, who did not look entirely convinced and could tell that his sister doubted her own words as well. At the same time, while everyone else was talking, Sasuke, Gara, and Shino just stared down the arena, with their eyes trained on the panting Senju air. In the cage box. That boy, he's even more dangerous than we had imagined, thought the rakage, who had a large frown on his face. Excellent, thought a disguised Orokimaru with evil smirk, who was quite pleased with how far Naruto had progressed since the Forest of Death. Well done my boy, thought a smiling Sarutobi, who was very proud of his surrogate grandson and slowly clapped for him along with the rest of the cheering crowd. I only wish you were here to see this Minato, you would be damn proud of your son, thought a smiling Jiraiya. Well done Naru-chan, I'm very proud of you, thought a beaming Sunid. Zabuza and Haku, were right about him, he is quite an interesting boy, the Mizukage thought with an intrigued look on her face as she joined in the Sandime in slowly clapping for Naruto. In the arena. Down in the arena Naruto could hear the audience chanting not only his name, but Yugito's as well, for a well-fought match. Among the chanting, Naruto could hear people yelling about how incredible their battle was and how amazing both he and Yugito were. He could even hear people calling their battle the greatest fight in the history of the Chunin exam. As the audience continued to applaud the two Genin, Genma turned to Naruto, who was slowly getting back onto his feet. Hey kid, if it's possible do you think could do something about these things? The Tokubatsu Jonan asked as he pointed to the large wooden tentacles that covered most of the arena, and the wooden pillars around Yugito. Since we can't really finish the exam with the arena covered in trees. Aye, I think so, Naruto replied, where he formed a single ram seal and then placed his right hand on the ground and closed his eyes and began to concentrate, calling back the wooden tentacles and pillars and reabsorbed the chakra that he used to create them. After a few minutes the wooden tentacles and pillars had sunk back into the ground and Naruto slowly stood back up. He had regained a small portion of his chakra, but was still very weak and tired. Sorry, but that's all I can do, a tried Naruto said as he looked at Genma. That's okay, we can handle the rest, the Tokubatsu Jonan replied with a small smirk. After which he watched Naruto walk over to Yugito, who was still lying on the ground but was now unbound. That kid sure has amazing stamina, after a battle like that, I'm amazed he can even stand let alone walk. Looks like I win again Yugito-chan, Naruto said with a tired smile as he looked down at the blonde Kumo Kanoiki. Who had a slightly annoyed and angry look on her face, since she was too weak to move after the Nibi chakra was forcibly suppressed. Damn you Naruto, you always seem to have a trick up your sleeve, don't you? Of course, answered the smirking Senju, I wouldn't be much of a shinobi if I didn't. How can you use Mokuten? I thought it was just a mutation, no one else your clan has ever had it before. To be honest I don't really know myself, bloodline limits are funny that way, some people can have them, others can't. Were you able to use it when we first fought? Yes. So even back then you were holding back. Yugito said with a frown and some anger in her voice. I had no choice, Naruto replied, come on Yugito you know as well as I do why I had to. It's just like why I lied to you about who I really was, if I had revealed that I had Mokuten, you would have been obligated to tell your village and you know exactly what would happen then. I guess, Yugito said with a slightly ashamed look, since she knew Naruto was right and knew if she had been in his position she would have done the exact same thing. Since having Mokuten made Naruto a target for many groups and villages, including her own, given it powers and ability. But still, she was bothered by the fact that Naruto held back on her, since she was a proud Kanoiki and did not like the fact that people held back on her when she fought them, since it made her feel weak. As if reading her mind, Naruto spoke again. Look even if I had used my Mokuten bloodline limit when we first fought, I doubt it would have helped much, since my skill in using it was limited at time. The fact is you're a strong Kanoiki Yugito, probably the strongest one I've ever fought, and the sole reason I learned Hokushiki Jijin Jutsu Kaku and Nitin Sushu was because I knew it was probably my best chance in defeating you. After Naruto said this, Yugito was left feeling a bit better with herself, 
despite the fact that she had lost, she had given it her all and had nothing to be ashamed of. It also helped to know that Naruto had gone to such lengths to defeat her, proving that Naruto had given everything he had into this fight. Do you want a hand getting up? Naruto asked as he offered his hand to help the girl up. Fine, but I want a rematch, and this time I'll beat you, Yugito replied where she slowly lifted her hand up, so that Naruto could help her up. Anytime, Naruto replied with another smirk, where he then reached down to grab the blonde girl's hand. But just as he was about to take hold of her hand, the events of the pervious battle finally took their toll on him, as he suddenly felt his body go limp. Crap, Naruto thought as he started to lose consciousness and fell forward and tried to brace himself for when he hit the ground. But instead of hitting the hard ground, his head landed on something soft. Since when did the ground feel like pillows? Naruto mumbled as darkness took him. But unknown to the blonde boy, his face had just landed on a now blushing Yugito's right breast and his right hand on her left. Nah you two, get off me now, said a bright red Yugito in a slow and low voice, with a mixture of anger and embarrassment. Now normally Yugito would have pushed Naruto off her and beaten him within an inch of his life. But given how weak her body was right now, she did not have the strength to move let alone throw Naruto off her. I am, five more minutes Ka-chan, mumbled Naruto, unaware of his surroundings, snuggling deeper in between Yugito's bosoms and groped her left breast slightly, which made the blonde girl turn an even brighter shade of red. It was at this point that entire stadium burst into a loud laughter, as the audience could no longer hold it in. But none could laugh harder than a young Inazuka boy and two senior Kanoiki, one red-haired and one purple-haired, who were all on the floor in tears from laughing so hard at the scene. As she continued to laugh, Kushina openly said she wished she had brought a camera with her and memorials the scene, knowing the teasing material she would have on her student. At that moment, a mortified Yugito wanted nothing more than to be eaten by the ground, knowing that she would never lie this down for as long as she lived. The only good thing about this situation was that the Nibi was not conscious at the moment, knowing the monster cat, she would tease and annoy her with this scene for months to come, if not for the rest of her life. As the crowd continued to laugh several female voice could he heard saying, Naruto-kun, you cheat. But as loud as the audience laughter was, it was nothing compared to the booming voice of a certain blonde-haired Sanon, who yelled, N-N-A-A-R-R-U-U-T-T-O-O, and was heard by the entire village. Better than any alarm clock, the angry roar of his mother woke the spiky-haired boy up, where his eyes snapped open and he instinctively jumped onto his feet. Whatever it is, I didn't do it. The panicking boy said quickly as he looked around for his mother, completely ignoring a crimson-faced Yugito lying below him. This of course only made the audience laugh even harder. Confused over why everyone was laughing, Naruto looked down at Yugito, who he finally noticed. A hey, is there something I'm missing? The blonde boy asked where he then noticed that Yugito was glaring angrily at him. But wasn't very intimidating given how she was still red from embarrassment. Don't tell me you don't remember. Genma asked with an amused grin. Remember what? Naruto asked with a confused look. What's the last thing you remember when you blacked out? Eush, my body went limp and I braced myself to hit the ground, but landed on something soft Naruto replied before it hit him. When he was drifting in and out of unconsciousness, he remembered how his hand gripped onto something small, firm and soft and the pillow underneath his head felt the same. Given how Yugito was lying underneath him, and her face was bright red, it didn't take a genius to figure what he had landed on. Oh no, Naruto thought in horror before turning a brighter shade of red than Yugito and would have put tomatoes to shame. But just when Naruto thought things couldn't get any worse, he suddenly heard a puff. When he turned to where the sound came from, he saw his mother marching towards him with a livid look on her face. Crap. I'm dead, Naruto thought when he saw his mother make her way towards him like an angry giantess. Ka-chan. It's not what you think, it was an accident, I swear. Naruto said quickly as he waved his hand up in denial. But his denials fell on deaf ears as soon it continued to match towards him, where she then grabbed his left ear and started to pull on it. Ak, Ka-chan what the hell are you doing? Screamed Naruto as his mother pulled on his left ear and began to drag him away. I'm taking you to the medical ward to treat your injuries and after that you and I are going to have another talk, since clearly the last one didn't work. Rounded Sunid as she continued to pull on her son's ear. No son of mine is going to become a pervert. Arush, Ka-chan stop it, 
I'm not a pervert, honestly. Naruto yelled as his mother continued to drag me away by the ear. It was an accident I swear. Ah. Ka-chan, you're gonna pull my ear off. Seeing the Senju mother dragging her son away, the audience once again erupted in laughter and continued to laugh long after the two blondes left the arena. Later in the medical ward. Ten minutes after the spectacle in the arena, Naruto lay on one of the medical beds, with his mother standing over him on his right side, using Shosenjutsu, mystic palm technique, to heal his injuries. When Chuan first arrived with Naruto, the medics tried to take Naruto from her, saying that they could take care of him. But soon it would have none of it, stating that she would allow no one expect Shizun or herself to treat Naruto's injuries. Assisting in the healing was Shizun, who was standing over Naruto on his left side. Shizun had arrived in the medical ward shortly after the two Senjus, carrying Naruto's tattered coat, along with his katana and sheath, which she had picked up after Sunid dragged Naruto away. During the healing process, Naruto was forced to listen to his mother's rants about what happened at the end of the match. She even went on to rant that she did not go through 12 hours of labor, just to let him turn into a pervert like Jiraiya. As soon as it continued to rant, Shizun just smirked, since she planned to tease Naruto later about what happened. Once Sunid and Shizun had finished treating all of Naruto's injuries, the Senju matriarch looked down at her son. So how do you feel Naru-chan? Sunid asked, ignoring the slightly annoyed look on her son's face. Who was embarrassed over how his mother still called him Naru-chan in front of people. Fine I guess, although I feel pretty tried. Well that's to be expected, given how you barely had any chakra left in you, which is why you're going to rest for the remainder of the exam. But what about the final match? Asked Naruto. You'll have to forfeit, replied the blonde woman. What? Cried Naruto as he sat up, only to be pushed down by his mother. You heard me, you will not be fighting in the final match, you barely have enough chakra as it is. You need to let your body rest and recover from your battles, not to mention let the rest of your injuries heal naturally. Can't I just take another food pill? No. Sunid said forcefully as she crossed her arms underneath her amble bosom, making them seem almost bigger. Don't think I didn't see you take one before you fought that Tsuna Kanoiki. You know full well the effects food pills have when you take them consecutive times without giving your body time to recover. Although food pills were highly useful tools that replenished one's chakra and nourished their body, allowing the user to keep fighting for three days and three nights without rest. Like many things it had a downside, which was that they would put extreme wear on the user's body, where they would suffer from severe exhaustion and be unable to do anything for a period of time. The effects would be made even worse if the person took multiple pills before recovering from the effects of the original pill. In some cases shinobi were known to die from the after effects of taking multiple food pills, where their bodies or hearts simply gave out from the stress they were put under afterwards. He couldn't even use his chakra seals that Kushina had taught him since he hadn't had time to replenish the seals with chakra, due to all the training he had been doing for the past month. The Kyuubi's chakra was also out of the question given how if he used it, it would reveal his status as a Jinchuriki for the Kyuubi. His mother had even stated clearly, that he was only to use it if he was in a life or death situation. After being forbidden from using any more food pills, Naruto just moaned from annoyance, even though he understood where his mother was coming from in regards to food pills. He was still a bit annoyed over how he was being forced to quit, when he was just one match away from winning the Chunin exam. Can I at least go watch Sasuke and Gara's match? Naruto asked. At first Sunid did not answer and thought it over for about a minute or so before answering. I will allow it, but only if you promise that when your next match comes, you'll forfeit and not try to fight. Ka-chan. Naruto moaned. Promise me, repeated Sunid with a serious look. All right, all right, I promise. Good, said the blonde woman with a nod. But if you break your promise and try to fight, not only will I stop the match. I will strap to this bed for the rest of the year. Moom, Naruto moaned from embarrassment. Don't mom me young man, Sunid scolded, just because you're a shinobi now doesn't mean I can't ground you. When Sunid said this, a snort of laughter was heard from the other end of the small room on Naruto's right. The snort of course came from the only other patient in the room, Ni Yugito, who was being treated for her injuries by two medics. Yugito had naturally heard everything and couldn't help but laugh at how the mighty Senju Naruto, could be brought to heel so easily by his mother. 
Naruto of course could only groan from humiliation and wished that this was all some kind of cruel nightmare and that he would wake up from at any moment. Thankfully though a distraction soon came, where the occupations of the room heard a disturbance coming from outside. Deciding to investigate, the two medics treating Yugito went out of the room. But before long the disturbance got louder where they then heard a familiar male voice yell, step out of my space, before I plant my foot in your face. What the hell is going on out there? Chuan asked angrily before she and Shizun decided to go out and see what was happening. You two don't move we'll be back in a minute. But just as the two female medics were leaving the room, Sunit suddenly turned to look at Yugito, who was still lying on her bed. Oh and before I forget, don't even think of trying to take advantage of my son now that he is helpless, said the slug princess sweetly. What? I would never do something like that. Cried Yugito who turned red again when Sunit accused her of trying to take advantage of Naruto. I'm not interested in him. Good. See that you don't, otherwise, I will kill you, said the elder blonde with a sickly sweet smile that crept the female Jinchuriki out. After Sunid and Shizun left, Yugito quickly turned to Naruto, who now had his right hand covering his eyes out of shame and embarrassment. She kidding, right? Knowing my mother, she was dead serious, Naruto replied as he turned to his fellow blonde. First Nibi, now Naruto's mother, why is it that everyone keeps thinking that I'm interested in him? The blonde girl thought in annoyance. Sorry about my car Chan, she can be a little overzealous at times. So I've noticed, Yugito replied dryly. Is she always like that? Mainly when it comes to things that involve me, answered the blonde boy. She obviously cares a great deal about you, Yugito remarked. Yeah, although there are times where she can be a bit smothering, Naruto replied. So you really are a mama's boy, Yugito said and smirked when she saw the blonde boy groan again and close his eyes out of embarrassment. Oh, don't call me that please, I get enough teasing from my nei chan. Besides I like to see you do any better when you have a mother like mine, Naruto said, as he took the pillow from underneath him to cover his face from embarrassment. You should be grateful that you have a mother like her, who would do anything to make sure that you're safe, Yugito said. I guess Naruto said, since he cared a great deal about his mother and knew she felt the same. So what's your mom like? Naruto asked looking at his female friend. At this question Yugito didn't answer right away and just stared up at the ceiling with a blank look on her face. But before long she answered, I wouldn't really know she died when I was about two. Sorry, Naruto said with a shamed look over bringing up Yugito's dead mother, niece going Barker. It's fine, you didn't know, Yugito replied without any emotions, all the while looking up at the ceiling. What about your dad? Dead. He died when I was nine, Yugito said a little quicker, although continued to stare up at the ceiling. Sorry, Naruto said again, while silently cursing himself again for asking about her father. Damn it can I do nothing right? It's okay, but what about your dad? Yugito said where she then turned to Naruto. But before Naruto could respond to the question, the two blondes suddenly heard Sunid voice from outside the room. I don't care if you were her sensei. She's still recovering from her injuries, so go back to your seat and, what the hell do you think you're staring at? Shouted the female Senju before a loud bang and crash was heard and several voices were heard shouting, Sensei. When the door opened again an angry looking Sunid entered, dusting her hands off and muttering about how perverts were as bad as cockroaches, since no matter how many she smashed, there were always more of them. Curious, Yugito and Naruto lifted their heads up to look through the open door and peered behind Sunid to see what happened. When they looked outside, they saw some wee, omoi, karui and some medics trying to pull a man out of a wall by his legs. Who had somehow ended up with the upper half of his body stuck inside the hallway wall. Now then, where were we? Sunid asked, with a smile that was far too sweet, as she closed the door behind her and Shizun, resulting in both Naruto and Yugito to have large sweat drops on the back of their heads. I'm starting to understand why Naruto is so scared of her, Yugito thought, while making a note to herself to try and stay on the slug princess's good side. Twenty minutes later, after finally being treated, the two blonde teens slowly made their way to the finalist box. Both Jenon looked fairly worn given the tired look on their faces and how slowly they were moving. Not to mention the state of their clothes, even the coat that Jiraiya gave Naruto before the finals, which he was now wearing again along with his katana, was in tatters and covered in dirt from his battle with Yugito. 
Killer B and the others had already returned to their seats, not wanting to incur the slug princess wrath any further. Sunid and Shizun had also returned to their seats, but before they left, Sunid made sure to remind Naruto of his promise to forfeit his match when his turn came. She even went on to say that she would not stand for any more hanky-panky between the two of them. Naturally both blondes turned bright red from embarrassment at the accusation and fervently denied that they had such a relationship. But Sunid did not seem convinced and said she would be watching them both closely. As Naruto and Yugito made their way to the finalist box, the two blondes talked about their match and complimented each other on how much they had each improved since they last fought. But as they continued to talk, they suddenly heard the screams of two men. Quickly the two blondes made their way down the hall and turned to their left. When they turned they saw the Kusa Chun and Midori, who threatened Yugito before their match, being dragged back into another hallway by a large amount of sand. Seeing the two Jen and Midori turn to them and yelled, help, stop, stop. As the sand continued to pull him into the other hallway. Before Naruto could even try to save the man, Yugito held out her arm in front of him, stopping him from moving, and shook her head. She knew it was already too late for him and that there was nothing they could do, especially in their weakened state. Seconds later they heard one last loud scream from Midori from the hallway before there was nothing but silence. Shortly after they heard the sounds of footsteps echo through the hallway and before long a person emerged from it. The person was none other than Sabaku no Gara, who slowly walked out from the hallway. When Gara emerged from the dark hallway, neither Yugito or Naruto were surprised to see him, since they already knew who was behind what had happened when they saw the sand drag Midori away. After Gara appeared the red-headed boy turned to the two blondes and stared at both of them. Not wanting to show any fear, both teens stared back at Gara and made sure to keep faces expressionless. After about a minute or so of staring at the two blondes, Gara turned away and made his way to the stairs, which were right in front of him. But before slowly moving down the stairs to the arena, he spared one last glance at Naruto. In that moment no words were exchanged, as there was no need to, since the look Gara gave the senju air said it all, you're next. Once Gara was gone, Yugito let out a breath that she did not realize she was holding. Nibi and Hachibi were right, that guy is dangerous. I've never seen anyone kill like that without hesitation or remorse, not even B-sensei is like that. He really is a monster. He really has become a living weapon, Naruto thought as he remembered what he had learned about Jinchuriki and how some villagers try to turn them into living weapons without any emotions. What do you think made him kill them? Naruto asked, breaking the silence between the two of them. If I were to guess, I would say that they tried to intimate him into losing his match, like they did with us. Fatal mistake, Naruto muttered as he could not help but pity the poor fools. Guess they didn't learn their lesson when they confronted us. We better get going, if that Gara guy is heading down to the arena then his match must be about to start, Yugito said after gaining Naruto's attention. Nodding to this, Naruto then made his way up to the finalist box with Yugito. In the cage, as the events between the three Jinchuriki were happening, the Yonkage four shadows were just finishing discussing Yugito and Naruto's match. It was also at this moment that Sunid appeared in a whirl of leaves after using a shunshun body flicker. Ah Sunid, I'm pleased to see you, how is Naruto-kun? The Sandime Hokage asked as he turned to his former female student. He's fine, most of his wounds were just superficial, right now he's just tired from using so much chakra. Yes that's perfectly understandable, answered the old Hokage with a nod. And what of Yugito? Asked the Rakage. She should be fine as well, like Naru-chan her wounds are mostly superficial and just needs to rest for a while to recover her strength. After hearing this, the Rakage nodded, pleased that Yugito would recover without incident. But even so it did not settle his concerns about Naruto and his recently revealed Mokuten powers. I'm sure the brat will be fine, if not I sure there are plenty of young girls here who are willing to help take care of him, Jiraiya said with a cheesy grin. Barely even in his teens and he already has dozens of girls after him, I so proud. Jiraiya thought with anime tears of joy. But his joy over his godson popularity with the girls quickly ended when he heard the familiar sounds of knuckles cracking. When he turned he saw Sunid slowly cracking her knuckles and glaring at him in a way that made the Gama Senen feel like he should cover her privates and back away. Eventually though Sunid turned from Jiraiya to her former sensei, but not before giving the super pervert one final glare. 
So what were you all talking about before I arrived? The Senju Mati Arch asked. The other cages and I were just discussing whether or not to recommend Naruto-kun and young Yugito to become Chunin, answered the Sandime. And what did you decide? Well given their rather explosive battle and the ways they fought and overcame their opponents in their previous matches, we've decided to recommend both of them to be Chunin, the Mizukage replied. Yes, added Sarutobi, both Yugito and Naruto-kun showed remarkable skill and talent in their battle, far exceeding most genin. They also showed impressive resourcefulness, adaptability and analyzing skills in their earlier battles, where Yugito overcame her opponent's Kirigakur no Jutsu, hidden mist technique, and size ink creatures. Naruto also came up with unique and inventive ways to use his opponent's own strengths against them. Both of them have potential to make fine chunin. After hearing this Sunid just smiled, even though Naruto was disappointed with her forbidding him from entering the final match. She knew that the news of him becoming a chunin would more than make up for it. The finalist box. As the remaining members of the finalist waited for Sasuke and Gara's match to begin, they saw Yugito and Naruto walk up the stairs from the lower levels. Geez you two are back already, Shikamaru said when he saw the two blondes. I thought the both of you would be out of action after what you did. Try not to sound too disappointed Shikamaru, Naruto said with amused smile. Tisk, I just thought that with you out of action Sasuke and Gara's match would be the last match and this troublesome exam would finally be over. Upon hearing this Naruto just smiled out of amusement since that was typical Shikamaru. But before he could respond to the young Nara's comment Karui suddenly spoke up. Hey Yugito, you okay? Yes I'm fine, just a bit weak from the battle, answered the blonde Kanoiki. Did he try anything on you while you were recovering? Karui asked as she glared over at the Senju. B Sensei and the rest of us tried to get in. But Senju's mother wouldn't let us by and smashed Sensei into a wall when she caught him staring at her breasts. You, I should have known thought Yugito as she shook her head from embarrassment after hearing why Sunid had smashed her teacher into a wall. Hey what's that supposed to mean Karui? Naruto asked in annoyance when he heard Karui ask Yugito if he tried anything on her. You know damn well what I meant Senju, I always knew you were a pervert. Accused Karui. I am no pervert. Naruto retorted angrily since he did not like being called one. Ha. Huh. That's funny coming from you after what you just did to Yugito, not to mention some wee before that. Both those were complete accidents. A now red-faced Naruto said, given how he was still quite embarrassed over those two incidents. It's not like I meant those things to happen. The argument of course would have continued had Yugito not intervened, and told Karui to drop it. Obeying her teammates wishes Karui dropped the subject, although did spare an annoyed glare at Naruto before turning to look down at the arena where Sasuke was standing. Who had jumped down into the arena earlier after his name was called and waited for Gara to appear, who was slowly making his way down the stairs. When Naruto turned to look at the arena, he saw that it had been renewed and was almost exactly the way it was before the final started. It was of course obvious that during the time he and Yugito were being treated, someone had used some Dota ninjutsu to make the arena floor flat again, as well as to remove the rubble from the ruined arena wall, which still had the holes and gaps in it from the previous battles. When Naruto finished looking over the renewed arena, Gara finally emerged from below the stairway and into the arena. As Gara made his way over to Sasuke and Genma, Shikamaru suddenly turned to Naruto. So who do you think will win, Sasuke? I can't be a hundred percent certain, but if I were to guess I would say that Sasuke will lose, Naruto answered. Seriously? Asked Shikamaru as he turned to Naruto is surprise, since Sasuke was one of the strongest people in their year, second only to Naruto, given what he saw the Senju air do in his last fight. He of course knew that Gara would have an advantage over Sasuke since he had yet to fight, given how all his opponents forfeited. But to hear Naruto say so bluntly that Sasuke would lose was still surprising. I agree with Senju-san, Shino said suddenly, who had been standing near the two Kanoa Genin and overheard what they were talking about. Sabaku no Gara is more dangerous than you can imagine. After hearing Shino agreeing with Naruto, even Shikamaru was beginning to doubt Sasuke's chances of winning, especially when he remembered how Gara dealt with that Amnin in the preliminaries. What do you think Yugito? Karui asked as she looked at her teammate. I agree as well, Sabaku no Gara is extremely dangerous, especially since he is like me. You mean, 
Karui asked in surprise and looked at her friend, who just nodded in confirmation. After learning of what Gara really was, Karui stared down at the red-headed boy with a concerned look. In the arena, once both Sasuke and Gara were in the arena, Genma eyed both Jen and careful, Sasuke looked eager to fight and was loosening himself up, while Gara just stared at him with a bloodthirsty look. After Genma said begin, the Tokubatsu Jonan quickly jumped away, since he had learned firsthand from previous battles, not to underestimate the Genin from this year's exam. Once Genma official began the match, Gara slowly drew his sand out from his gourd, causing Sasuke to jump back a bit, knowing how dangerous Gara was when he released his sand. But as soon as Gara released the sand from his gourd he suddenly felt intense pain coming from his head and held it in his right hand. After which he began to mutter to himself, asking his mother not to get so mad at him and to forgive him. Hearing Gara muttering, Sasuke could only stare in disbelief at the strange boy and wonder what he was talking about. But before he could ponder on what was happening any further, Gara suddenly settled down and told Sasuke to come at him. Not one to back down from a challenge, Sasuke quickly took out two shuriken from his leg pouch and threw them at Gara, who caught them with his sand shield after he had his sand turn into a clone of himself. Seeing this, Sasuke immediately raced toward Gara, but after only taking two steps, Gara's clone unleashed a massive blast of sand at the Uchiha, forcing Sasuke to jump up into the air to avoid it, but as he hung in midair Gara's clone threw the two shuriken that it caught earlier back at Sasuke, forcing the raven-haired boy to take out two more and use them to deflect the incoming shuriken. After deflecting the shuriken, Sasuke fell towards the clone and delivered a powerful spin kick to it, which the clone blocked before pushing the dark-haired boy away. Recovering quickly, Sasuke then delivered a strong back hand to the clone's jugular. But as soon as his hand connected with the clone, the sand started to wrap itself around Sasuke's arm. Realizing what was happening Sasuke immediately hit the clone in the face with a strong punch in the face, destroying the clone and causing it to revert back into sand, leaving Gara now open to attack. Not wanting to waste an opportunity to gain the advantage Sasuke immediately closed in on the Suna Nin and attempted a forward punch to the face. But before his fist could even come close to connecting, Gara's sand moved in between them and blocked Sasuke's punch. After blocking Sasuke's punch, Gara's sand quickly moved around the young Uchiha and attempted to envelope him from all sides. But before it could close in on Raven-haired boy, he disappeared in a blur. In that instant a shocked looks appeared on everyone's faces, where many, including a certain spiky-haired blonde and bushy-haired boy, were having a sudden flash of deja vu from the preliminaries. After Sasuke disappeared, Gara quickly turned around to try and find him, only to be sent flying across the ground by a powerful right hook to the face from Sasuke. In the finalist box. Unreal, he's moving almost as fast as that Lee guy without his weights, said Shikamaru in surprise. It's not just that, he's also mimicking Lee movements, Naruto said who was just as surprised as Shikamaru. He even recognized some of Sasuke's moves, since he had been on the receiving end of such a punch when he fought Lee a month ago. In the arena, looks like my punch wasn't as effective as I thought, the Uchiha air thought, when he saw cracks appear around Gara's face as he slowly got back onto his feet. Figuring that Gara also covered his body in sand, to act like armor and protect him from any damage. Enter Naruto OST Beautiful Green Wild Beast. Seeing that his attack did little damage, Sasuke finally activated his Sharingan and charged head-on at Gara with an impressive burst of speed. Acting quickly, Gara brought his sand up to capture the Uchiha, but like earlier, before the sand could reach Sasuke. The raven-haired boy disappeared in a blur and reappeared behind the Suna Genin. Seeing that Sasuke was now behind him again, Gara immediately had his remaining sand moved towards the Uchiha who then maneuvered around it and inside Gara's safe zone, where he delivered sharp kick to the red-haired boy's stomach, sending him flying into the air and crashing onto the ground. What's wrong don't tell me that's all you got? Sasuke asked with a confident smirk as he looked at Gara, who was getting back onto his feet and glaring at the dark-haired boy. If I have to, I'll tear that armor of your piece by piece. With another burst of high speed, Sasuke moved toward Gara and began to circle around him in high speed, making it impossible for Gara's sand to lock on him. Realizing that his sand couldn't keep up with Sasuke's newfound speed, Gara had his sand move around him defensive position, so that he could block an attack from any direction. 
but before his defense could be fully formed, Sasuke once again maneuvered past Gara's sand and inside his safe zone. After which he then dealt a sharp kick to the side of the redhead's face, causing him to fall back, but before he could hit the ground. Sasuke grabbed hold of his clothing and pulled him back where he delivered a strong knee to the gut, causing Gara to fall to knees in pain. When Gara fell to his knees, Sasuke quickly jumped back, putting some distance between him and the Suna Genin, where he then began to pant slightly. End Naruto Ost Beautiful Green Wild Beast. In the finalist box. Looks like the Uchiha is better than I originally believed, thought and impressed Yugito. But it seems that moving at that speed has taken a good bit out of him. Just as I thought, Naruto thought to himself, Sasuke probably used his Sharingan to mimic Bushi Brow's speed and movements when he watched him fight me. But he can only maintain that level of speed for a short period of time, and even then it takes a lot out of him, since he doesn't have the same level of stamina as Bushi Brow, who trained his body for years to reach that level. HMF, looks like you were wrong about the Uchiha Senju, he's wiping the floor with that Gara guy, said Karui smugly. I'll admit, I underestimated Sasuke a good bit, but that doesn't mean that I am wrong about Gara. Trust me, we've yet to see his real power, replied Naruto, where he then glanced over at Kankuro and Temari, who both had concerned looks on their faces. What are you planning to do now Gara? Kankuro thought, as he stared down at his younger brother who was now on his knees. The Suna no Yoroi armor of sand uses too much chakra, it won't last much longer. Gara thought a worried Temari before glancing up at her father, wondering why he hadn't signaled the invasion to begin already. In the audience. Not bad, remarked Kuratsuki with a slightly impressed look. I give the Uchiha this, he isn't half bad, thought Mai, who was intrigued with how quickly Sasuke had improved his speed and taijutsu. To think he could achieve that level of speed and mimic Lee's move so well in just one month, it's incredible, thought a surprised guy. Sasuke-san, thought Lee who was just as surprised as his teacher. Sasuke-kun is incredible, Sakura yelled ecstatically after seeing the Uchiha kicking Gara around. No kidding, said Choji in awe. Yeah, but he's still nowhere near as cool as Naruto-kun, replied Ino, which immediately started a heated argument between her and Sakura, with poor Choji stuck in the middle. What kind of training did you make him go through? Kurenai asked when she turned to Kakashi. I wouldn't mind knowing that either, how can Sasuke move with that level of speed after training for only one month? Asuma asked who was just as surprised as everyone else. Sasuke copied Lee's movements and fighting moves with his Sharingan back when he had the little scuffle with Lee before the first exam. I then later trained him in Taijutsu so that he could get used to moving at that level of speed. I figured as much, said Kushina suddenly, since it's the only possible way he could improve his speed and Taijutsu so quickly but Taijutsu alone won't be enough to defeat that Gara kid and his sand. I'm well aware of that Kushina senpai, replied Kakashi with a knowing look. Seeing this Kushina frowned slightly and thought, what are you up to Kakashi, and what else did you teach Sasuke? In the finalist box. As the finalist watched Sasuke and Gara, they saw Gara slowly get back onto his feet and form a tiger seal. After which the sand around him started to hover around him and form a large sphere of sand. What's he up to? Shikamaru asked. Nothing good, Naruto replied with a frown. That's Gara's, a fearful Kankuro thought as he recognized the sand sphere. Is he planning on using that technique? Maybe we should get out of here. There's no doubt, he's planning on using that technique, a frightened Temari thought. This is not good, damn it Gara have you completely forgotten the plan, it's too soon. In the audience. This is absurd, Baki thought angrily, that little idiot Gara, we don't know when the signal will be given. In the arena, when Sasuke saw the sand sphere forming around his opponent, the Uchiha quickly realized he needed to do something before the sphere was completed. Racing at top speed, Sasuke quickly reached Gara, But just as he was about to punch the sand sphere, he came to a dead stop, which was just in the nick of time as several sand spears appeared out of the sphere and would have impaled him had he not stopped when he did. After jumping away from the sand sphere, the sand spears quickly retreated back into the sphere. At the same time a small eyeball made out of sand formed above the sand sphere and stared directly at Sasuke. For the next few minutes Sasuke attempted a series of attacks using, Shuriken, Kunai and Taijutsu from multiple different directions. 
but even with his enhanced speed, each and every one of his attacks failed to penetrate the hardened sand sphere and he was forced to move away because of the sand spears that emerged from the sphere. Looks like nothing works, none of my attacks can penetrate his defense, he's completely shut himself in, Sasuke thought. But that could be a good thing for me since he can't attack and that gives me time to prepare my new move, which takes some time and is probably the only thing that can pierce his defense. Knowing what he needed to do, Sasuke quickly preformed a series of backflips and then made his way up along one of the undamaged sides of the arena wall. Once he reached the highest point of the wall, he unbuckled some of the straps on his left arm and started to form 12 separate hand seals. After he performed the hand seal he then held his left hand in his right and started to channel his chakra into it. Enter Naruto OST Reikiri. As the chakra formed in his hand it turned into lightning, covering his entire left hand and becoming visible to everyone in the audience. As the lightning in Sasuke's hand grew, a loud chirping noise could be heard coming from the lightning technique. Once the technique was ready Sasuke raced forward where the excess energy from the lightning technique tore up the wall as he ran down it and headed straight for Gara's sand sphere. In the finalist box. What is that? Thought Kankuro, Temari, Shikamaru, Shino and Karui together. Is that what I think it is? Naruto thought in recognition. Could that be? Thought Yugito, who like Naruto recognized the technique from stories she had heard from other Kumo Shinobi about the famed copycat Nin Hitaki Kakashi. In the audience. I don't believe it. Guy said in disbelief, Kakashi actually taught Sasuke the technique. Guy sensei, do you know what that technique is? Neji asked, as he had never seen a jutsu like this before in his life. Yes I do, replied the elder man with a large frown and a serious look on his face, which was highly unusual for his students to see. To think that a boy his age could use such a technique, he's just like the Senju heir, this is the power of the Uchiha clan. That technique it can't be, said a wide-eyed Zabuza, who was actually sweating a little. It is, replied Haku, who like her sensei knew the technique Sasuke was using, since it was not a technique that either one of them could forget. You actually taught him that technique? A shocked Yamato asked as he turned to his former Anbu captain. I did. But why, you know how dangerous that technique is, even more for someone like you. I taught him the technique, because he is like me. I see now, the reason why you focused so much on his taijutsu is because you wanted to increase his speed and stamina to the point that he could handle using the technique, said Kushina after realizing what Kakashi had done. Correct, the copy nin replied with an ice smile, which quickly faded after a glare from Kushina. Who told him that was still not a good enough excuse for being so late and for holding up the exam. This then made the silver-haired John and Sai with weariness and thought, I just can't win with her. Amazing, I can see the chakra clearly with my own eyes, said a stunned Sakura. What is it? Ino asked. Better yet why is it making all that noise? Kiba asked as he held his ears in pain, as it was hard on his sensitive hearing. It's simply a straight trust, answered Kushina, gaining the genin's attention. It's Kakashi's only original move, a secret technique that is so powerful that it is classified as an A-rank assassination technique. It relays on the speed and power of the user's trust, as well as the amount of chakra that they can generate. The technique involves the user channeling a large amount of chakra into their arm and converting it into lightning. When you combine all these things it turns the user's arm into a sword that can pierce through anything. Also because of the increased speed the user moves at, it makes a loud chirping noise that sounds like a large group of birds, which is what gives the technique its name Chidori, 1000 birds. After Kushina finished explaining the technique to the genin, Sasuke final reached Gara and used his Chidori to pierce through his sand sphere. End Naruto OST Reikiri. In the finalist box. NN no way, said a stunned Kankuro who was starting to sweat in fear, Gara's absolute defense has been. This can be real, said a shocked Temari who still couldn't believe her eyes. I can't believe Kakashi sensei actually taught Sasuke Chidori, Naruto thought in surprise. There's no doubt about it that Hitaki Kakashi famed Chidori, Yugito thought in disbelief at Sasuke actually using it to pierce Gara's defense. What is that technique? Karui thought who had never seen a lightning technique like that before. Unreal, muttered Shiyukamaru. In the audience. Impossible, said Baki, who couldn't believe that a mere Konoha genin could do what no sooner shinobi had ever done before, pierce Gara's impenetrable defense. In the cage box. 
That's Hitaki Kakashi's technique. Thought both the hockage and the rakage together. Very good, thought the disguised Orokimaru who was quite pleased with Sasuke's increased skill. Mai, commented the Mizukage in surprise as like the other cages she recognized Kakashi famed lightning technique. Shit, Kakashi actually though the brat that moved, Jiraiya thought with a frown, although at the same time he couldn't fault the copy nin. Since his student was going up against a psychopathic Jinchuriki and he would need something powerful not only to pierce his sand defense, but to survive as well. Sunid on the other hand remained silent and just stared down at Gara and the Uchiha with a large frown on her face. In the audience. All right. Yelled Kiba, he cut right through that sand ball like a knife through butter. Of course, said Kushina with a small smirk, Chidori a serious technique and is not something you can take lightly. Kakashi even has a more advanced technique called Reikiri, lightning cutter, which earned its name after Kakashi cut through a bolt of lightning. Huh. Cut through lightning. Ino thought with a disbelieving look. That sounds so fake, Sakura thought. Joji on the other hand looked over a Kakashi in awe and thought, TTH that's incredible. Yeah right, these old people and their stories, Kiba thought, who like the girls didn't believe the former red-headed Anbu captain. But still I have to admit that is one badass jutsu, Sasuke's got this match in the bag with a technique like that. In the arena, sitting inside his sand sphere, Gara was trying to understand the warm sensation he was feeling from his arm. It was then, when he suddenly felt a small drop of blood fall on his arm that he finally understood what he was feeling and let out a horrified scream that could be heard throughout the stadium. Blood. My blood. When the Temari and Kankuro heard their brother's screams of horror, both became fearful of what would happen next, as nothing like this had ever happened before, Gara had been wounded. After hearing Gara's screams, Sasuke tried to pull his arm from the sand sphere, but found he could not. It was as if something was holding onto it. Realizing that he needed to do something before his arm was pulled off, Sasuke channeled more lightning chakra from his arm into Gara. This caused the red-haired Jinchuriki to scream out in pain from the lightning as it traveled throughout his body. Eventually Sasuke finally freed his arm, but as soon as he pulled his arm out from the sand sphere, a long yellow demonic looking arm with strange markings on it came out with Sasuke's arm. In the finalist box. Shit is that what I think it is. Karui yelled in fear. It is. Said Yugito was already fearful of what would happen. If he loses himself to his biju, he'll destroy the entire arena and kill everyone in it. Damn it, this isn't good, Naruto thought as he was afraid of something like this happening. This is worse than I had imagined, thought a fearful Shino, who was now pale white with fear. What is he? Asked a horrified Shikamaru. It his arm, thought a frightened Kankuro after seeing the demonic arm emerge from the sand sphere. Did he change into his complete possession form? I don't know, replied a now very worried Temari. All we know is that he has been wound, this has never happened before. In the audience. This was not what was supposed to happen. Said a fearful Baki, who was sweating heavily with fear. He really is a monster. Kiba said fearfully after seeing the demonic arm erupt from the sand sphere. Kakashi Sensei, what's going on? Asked Sakura who was worried for Sasuke's safety. Asuma Sensei. Asked both Ino and Choji. Instead of answer their student's question, the John and Shinobi just stared down at the arena with concerned looks on their faces. This is the worst possible situation, Yamato thought. Fuck, I was afraid this would happen, that sooner Brat has lost it, we may have to intervene before he loses controls and destroyed the entire stadium, a worried Kushina thought. This is crazy, that Brat is a Jinchuriki too, what the hell are the cages thinking letting two Jinchuriki compete in the same exam, especially an insane one like him? Zabuza thought, who knew what this could mean? This is bad yo, mutter killer B. Yes I know, I can sense Shukaku's power and bloodlust rising in the boy. If this continues I fear we may have to step in as neither Yugito nor Naruto have the strength to stop him after their battle. If Shukaku is allowed to run free, he will destroy this entire stadium along with everyone in it, said Hachibi. Can't ye talk him down yo? Asked B. I'm afraid not, Shukaku will stop at nothing when he is like this. Even if he was willing to talk to me I don't think he would listen to me, since he refuses to speak to any of us Biju for many years. Feuds in the family ain't never right, B replied. In the arena, after Sasuke freed his arm, the demonic arm quickly retreated back into the sand sphere. Shit. What the hell was that? It nearly ripped my arm off.
Sasuke thought as he held his arm and stared into the hole that his Chidori made in the sand sphere. As he stared into the hole he heard a demonic-like growl from the sphere and then saw something move inside the sphere, something that didn't look human. When Sasuke peered deeper into the dark hole a cold sweat fell down his face and back. Before he could even comment to himself on what he had just seen. Sasuke suddenly saw a demonic-looking yellow eye filled with bloodlust looking straight at him through the hole. After which a large burst of power was felt by everyone in the stadium, causing the majority of people to shiver in fear. Shortly after, the sand sphere began to crack, before finally reverting into sand, revealing an injured Gara panting heavily and holding his bleeding shoulder. Soon after Gara looked up at Sasuke and glared at him with pure hatred for what he had just done. What's going on? What were those eyes I just saw a moment ago? What was that power I felt? Sasuke thought as none of this was making any sense to him. Before Sasuke could even try, he suddenly saw white feathers falling from the sky. In the finalist box, like Sasuke, Naruto and the other Chunin candidates noticed the white feathers falling from the sky and were starting to make them feel drowsy. Shit Genjutsu, Naruto thought realizing what was happening to him before using the Genjutsu Kai, illusionary technique release, to free himself from the effects of the Genjutsu. Yugito and the other also quickly followed his example and used the Genjutsu Kai to free themselves from the Genjutsu. After which they looked up to the audience and could see that they weren't the only ones who were being affected by the illusion. The operation has begun. Temari and Kankuro thought together. In the audience. Kushina Senpai this is, said Yamato as he felt the Genjutsu beginning to affect him. Yeah I know someone is casting a Genjutsu. It's Nian Shoja no Jutsu Temple of Nirvana technique. Said Kurenai who recognized the powerful Genjutsu technique. As soon as they realized that someone was casting a powerful Genjutsu to put everyone in the stadium to sleep. The veteran Shinobi along with all the other Shinobi who realized what was happening used Genjutsu Kai to free themselves from the effects of the illusion. Even some of the more skilled genin like Sakura, Hinata, Mai, Team 9, aka Team Guide the Kumo and Kiri genin were able to free themselves from the Genjutsu by dispelling it in time. A Genjutsu, is Kabuto finally on the move? Baki thought when he saw the falling white feathers and dispelled the illusion. The invasion has finally begun. In the cage box. Seeing the white feathers falling down on Arena the Sankages, three cages, and the two Sanan immediately realized that something was amiss. But before any of them could even say anything, the Yondime Kazekage suddenly spoke, let us begin. As soon as he said this the Kazekage's two guards pulled the pins on two smoke grenades, causing the cage box to erupt in smoke. Outside's the village. Currently hidden just outside Konohagaku or Hidden Leaves, a small army made up of hundreds of Suna and Oto Shinobi waited for the signal that would begin their attack. For the past few hours the small army of Shinobi stayed hidden in the forestry that surrounded Kanoa. It had of course not been easy due to the large number of Anbu patrols that nearly discovered some of the Shinobi teams. It was made even harder due to the long wait as many Shinobi were feeling anxious for the battle to being and could barely stand waiting. Some had even begun to worry that their attack had been found out and that the Kanoa Shinobi were ready for them. But finally after several hours of waiting the signal had appeared and a large explosion erupted from the Chunin Stadium. Upon seeing the smoke from the arena, the two shinobi forces went into action and moved towards Kanoa. At the same time in a hidden location in the forest, several Suna and Oto shinobi surrounded several different summoning circles, which were placed around Kanoa each with a scroll in their hand. Once they had gathered the necessary amount of chakra, and had each done the necessary hand seals. They quickly slammed their hands on the ground and cried out Kuchio's no jutsu summoning technique. After which an explosion erupted and a large cloud of smoke appeared. At Kanoa's outer wall minutes before the signal. Currently standing station on one of the lookout towers on the wall, two bored looking Chunin stood guard. Every now and again the two Chunin would turn in the direction of the stadium with longing looks, especially whenever they heard the loud cheers of the audience. The first Chunin was of average height and had short brown shoulder length hair that helped frame his face. He wore the standard green flak jacket and uniform of a typically Kanoa nin and wore his headband around his head like most shinobi. The second chunin was a middle-aged man, with brown eyes, short, brown spiky hair and beard. Like his counterpart, his attire consisted of the standard Kanoa shinobi uniform. 
Man we've got to be the two unluckiest guys in Kanoa to be posted on guard duty today, moaned the younger of the two Chunnan. I really wanted to see the Chunnan exam. Don't complain there be another one in six months time, replied the bearded Chunnan. You'll have plenty of other chances to watch them then. Yeah but this time soon it's Sama son Senju Naruto and the last Uchiha, Uchiha Sasuke are participating, answered the first Chunnan. When will I ever get another chance to see a match like that? I've even heard that a member of the Hyuga clan, who is said to be really gifted is in it, as well as some of the most talented genin in Kumo, Kiri and Suna. Seriously? Asked the bearded man aid in surprise. Seriously, and my money is on that the finals will end with the Senju and the Uchiha heirs facing off against one another, said the younger Chunnan. The match of the decade, and I'm missing it, I'm going to regret this for the rest of my life. Enter Naruto OST Heavy Violence. Before the elder Chunnan could even reply to his friend's statement the two Chunnan suddenly heard a large explosion coming from the stadium. What the? said the younger Chunnan said in surprise as he turned in the direction of the stadium. It came from the stadium, something must be happening, said the bearded Chunnan, but before his partner could even respond to this. The two Chunnan felt another explosion coming from outside the village. When the Chunnan turned and looked in the direction from where the explosion came from, they saw a large cloud of smoke in the distance. Seconds later, a giant three-headed snake appeared out of the smoke and quickly made its way towards them. Giant snakes. The younger Chunnan shouted in surprise when he saw the three-headed summons. We need to tell the Hokage Sama what is happening now, said the older Chunnan, but before he or his partner could do anything. The giant snake reached them and crushed the watchtower with them inside. After destroying the watchtower the giant three-headed snake made its way inside the village. This was of course not the only incident, at the same time at different points around the village, three more three-headed snake summons appeared outside the village and broke through the village outer wall. Naturally upon seeing the giant snakes, the other shinobi guards tried to stop the summons from entering their village. But despite their best efforts the Kanoa defenders proved no match for the giant reptiles and were instead pushed back themselves. As the Kanoa shinobi tried to contain the creatures, they soon found themselves under attack by Suna and Oto shinobi, who were now entering the village in large numbers through the massive holes that the snakes made when they broke through the wall. In the stadium stands. Shit the hockage. Cried Kushina when she and the other Kanoa nin saw the explosion in the cage box. Leave the hockage to us Kushina, spoke the Anbu commander as he and his two teams leaped to the cage box. Right, said Kushina, who knew that it was best to leave the hockage to the Anbu. In the cage box. Fuck. Yelled Jiraiya as he rubbed his eyes after the flash from the grenades and tried to see through the smoke. Sarutobi sensei. Cried Sunid as she blindly made her way through the smoke to her former teacher. Gazekich sama what is the meaning of this? Spoke the Sandime as he turned to his counterpart from Suna. At the same time the Anbu commander and his two squads arrived, where the commander quickly ordered the first team to follow him to help the Hockage, and had the second team go down to the stands below them and protect the fire Daimyo and other visiting lords. As soon as the other team left, the Anbu commander and his team came under attack from the Kazekage's guards who appeared out of the smoke. The guards were of course easily dispatched by the Anbu commander who skillfully sliced them both in two with his kunai. Hokage Sama, shouted Rado as he moved next to the old Hokage, but as soon as he did he was stabbed in the chest by two kunai from an unknown assailant. Before falling unconscious from his injuries, the Tokubatsu told the old Hokage to run. Seeing what happened to Rado, Jiraiya and Sunid moved over to their former teacher. But just as they reached him, the Kazekage appeared behind him, holding a kunai to the old man's throat. He then jumped up into the air with the Hokage and onto the rooftop, causing the two Sanan to follow after him. Not sure what was happening, the Mizukage, the Rakage and the guards moved out of the smoke, not wanting to get caught in the confusion. At the same time the Anbu commander and his team saw Fours blurs sped right past them, when they turned to look behind them. They saw that the pieces of the two, dead, Sunanins were gone and all that was left was their empty clothing. Realizing that they were fakes, the Anbu commander and his team immediately turned to look over at the Hokage and others. Who were now surrounded by four unknown shinobi. Looks like it's finally time, commented a dark-skinned man with four arms, who was wearing a shinobi headband with the symbol of Oto on it. I've got a lot of stress to vent because we had to stay in those cramped disguises for so long, said a silver-haired youth, who seemingly had another head sticking out of his back. 
You all smell like shit, spoke a red-headed teen, who was the only women of the group. Cut it out, we're all on the same side, scolded a bulky-looking youth with a mohawk-shaped hairstyle. Oto Shinobi, thought the Sandime and the two Sanan together when they saw their four Shinobi. We need to help the Hokage Sama, Jiraiya Sama and Sunit Sama, said the Anbu commander as he and his team leapt towards the Hokage and the others. But before they could reach them, the four Oto Shinobi surrounding the Hokage and the others, all formed a single hand seal and yelled, Ninpo, Shashinjin, Ninja Art, four violet flames battle encampment. As soon as the four Oto Shinobi said this, a large purple squared shaped barrier formed around the four cage level Shinobi. When one of the Anbu tried to break through the barrier, he was immediately pushed back, after which he then burst into flames. Damn it, they put up a barrier, we can't break through, said the Anbu commander after they were forced to halt their advance. End Naruto OST heavy violence. In the stands. From their position in the stands, Kushina, Kakashi and the others could see the large purple barrier now surrounding the Hokage and the others, preventing the Anbu from helping. I don't believe it, they were actually able to stop our Anbu, Yamato said in surprise. They are clearly not regular shinobi, commented Kakashi. We need to go help, spoke Kushina, where she was about to move, only to be stopped by another Anbu. Bear, what the hell do you think you're doing? Get out of the way. We need to help the Hokage Sama, he's in danger. Kushina yelled when she saw the Anbu. Bear of course did not answer and remained silent, but just as Kushina was about to yell at her former comrade again. Four masked Oto Shinobi appeared out of the audience and flanked him, blocking Kushina and the other's path. Well this is certainly a bummer, mutter Kakashi. I never expected an enemy agent to be disguised as one of our Anbu members, said Yamato with a frown while he and the other ready themselves for combat. Kushina surprisingly did not comment, although a low growl could be heard from her as she slowly drew her katana. Realizing that for the enemy agent to be disguised as Bear, he must have killed him. He must have been the one who cast the Nian Shoja no Jutsu, said Kurenai, since only skilled shinobi could perform such a large-scale version of the technique. On the rooftop, currently trapped inside the purple barrier the two Sanan stared off with the Kazekage, who still held their former teacher hostage. Neither one was willing to act yet for fear of what would happen to the Sandime should they try anything. I never expected sooner to betray Kanoa like this, tell me why Kazekage Sama. The Hokage asked, as the Suna Cage continued to hold his kunai against his neck. A treaty is merely camouflage to relax an enemy. But now these little mock battles are at an end and the true one begins now. Are you trying to start a war? Sunid suddenly spoke, as she and Jirai stood in front of the Kazekage and the Hokage, several meters apart. Why yes, replied the Kazekage with a small chuckle. Kazekage Sama, I beseech you, stop this madness while there is still time, whatever problems there are between us, we can talk them out. There is no need for this to escalate into a war, said the Sandime, hoping to reason with his fellow cage. When the Sandime finished, the Kazekage began to chuckle, clearly you've not only grown old, but become complacent as well, after getting used to peace, Sarutobi Sensei. Once the Kazekage said this, the Hokage and the two Sanan finally realized that they were not dealing with the Kazekage. In the finalist box. Shit. So that's what they were up. They were planning on attacking us. Shouted Naruto after seeing what happened in the cage box. Damn it, I should have realized it sooner, now it makes sense. They were probably planning on having Gara transform into his Biju state when they were ready, making it easier to destroy us. Yugito what the hell is going on? Asked Karui as she turned to her teammate, since she didn't understand what was going on. Given how last she checked, Suna and Kanoa were supposed to be allies. Looks like Suna has betrayed Kanoa, Yugito replied as she narrowed her eyes. Crap, looks like we've just been caught in the middle of a war, we need to get to be Sensei and the others now. You bastards. Roared Naruto as glared at Kankuro and Temari and prepared to draw his katana to attack. But before he could even pull it out halfway, Temari opened up her large fan and swung it, creating a massive blast of wind that sent Naruto and the others crashing into the wall behind them. Once Naruto and the others were dealt with Temari and Kankuro quickly jumped into the arena to aid their wounded brother. Who was on his knees holding his injured shoulder. On the rooftop. My. My when Gara did his thing, I was planning on stealing Sasuke-kun and Naruto-kun, said the fake Kazekage. But it seems that I cannot have everything go my way. 
At the mention of her son, Sunid began to growl and took a step forward, only to be stopped by Jiraiya who shook his head, telling her not to. I see, so I was right, you're after not only Kanoa, but Sasuke and Naruto, said the Sandime calmly. Do you actually believe that Kanoa is that important? The imposter cage asked. It, a pity Gara was not able to transform when it was time, you could have all seen something very interesting. But still, it matters little, since your ignorance has finally driven the finally nail into Kanoa's coffin and I have one. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Jiraiya retorted angrily. Indeed, we do not know the results of something until the very end, added the Sandime. I believe taught you that, Orokimaru. After the Hokage said his name, the former Sanin just smirked behind his mask and used his one free hand to pull of his mask and false face, revealing himself. So good to see you too, Jiraiya kun, Sunid, Sarutobi sensei. I knew it, thought both Jiraiya and Sunid together as they both glared at their former teammate. Orokimaru gasped the Mizukage in shock, who was standing just outside the purple barrier. The infamous Nuke Nin said out in surprise. So all this time, it was Orokimaru pretending to be the Kazekage, said the Rakage out loud. I knew there was something off about him. But what happened to the Yondime Kazekage Sama? She asked. Who knows, replied Darui, knowing that this wasn't going to end well. I knew this day one come, said the Sandime sadly before staring directly into Orokimaru's eyes. But, just because I have gotten old, doesn't mean that you can take my head so easily. You tell him old man said Jiraiya as he prepared to fight. If you want Sensei's life you'll have to go through us first, said Sunid with a fiery determination as she too prepared for battle. Kukuku, oh I had every intention of doing so my dear Sunid, replied Orokimaru with sinister smirk, where he then brought up his kunai and licked it with his long tongue. And no matter how much you resist it will change nothing as you will all die here today, together. In the stands. It seems they have quite a number of people, Asuma remarked while at the same time glancing worriedly up at his father who was trapped in the barrier. Stay safe dad. Tisk, we're careless, they caught us with our pants down, muttered Anko. And if that wasn't enough they have the Hokage Sama hostage and Sunid Sama and Jiraiya Sama are trapped inside the barrier, added Shizun where she then looked up to where her teacher was. When she looked inside the barrier her eyes widen in shock. Everyone look up inside their barrier. When the senior shinobi looked up to the rooftop where the Hokage and the others were, they were shocked to see that the Kazekage was in fact Orokimaru in disguise. Orokimaru. Anko hissed furiously as she felt the curse seal on her neck burn with pain. Shit. Cursed Kushina, who knew how bad this would make things. Hokage Sama, said Yamato in concern for his leader. Dad, thought a worried Asuma. It was then when all the senior Jonan were momentarily distracted by the Kazekage being actually Orokimaru in disguise. That two of Oto Shinobi jumped forward and tried to attack Sakura and Hinata who were still in their seats. Taken by surprise and unable to do anything, both girls closed in fear of what was to come next. But just as the masked Shinobi were about to pounce down on them, two figures suddenly appeared in front of the girls and slashed both in the chest before pushing them away. When the two girls opened their eyes, they saw Kakashi and Kushina standing in front of them, and immediately realized they had protected them from the enemy Shinobi. Bastards, hissed Kushina after drawing her katana from its sheath. The red-headed Jonan was already angry over the death of Bear, who had been a friend, and what was happening now. But after seeing the two Oto Nins going after Hinata and Sakura, she was now livid. The other shinobi of course noticed Kushina's fury, since it was hard not to, given how her bright red hair began to rise up and was moving around like a roaring fire which matched the murderous red aura surrounding her. Oh boy, Things are going to get messy now, Kakashi thought, as he knew that look all too well. He first saw it on a mission against a large group of Kumo Shinobi, who had ambushed them, and it was after that battle that people began to refer to Kushina as Baradi Shinku no Akari, Bloody Crimson Fury. Kakashi was of course not the only one who knew this look, since Yamato also knew it, and the last time he saw Kushina acted like this, things got rather, bloody. Sakura-chan, Hinata-chan, I think it's best that you two stay here and not move, Kakashi said as he looked down at the two girls, and gave them one of his friendly eye smiles, as if there was nothing wrong. As who knows what will happen now that Kushina-senpai is like this. Enter Naruto OST Reikiri.
After Kushina and Kaskashi saved Hinata and Sakura from the Oto Shinobi, two dozen more Oto and Suna Shinobi appeared out of the audience, and joined the fake Anbu and the remaining other Oto Shinobi. At the same time several Kanoa Shinobi arrived and joined Kushina and the others, where the two sides then faced off with one another. After a moment or so of staring at one another, the battle began with an angry shout from Kushina who yelled, kill them all. I really hate it when she gets like that, said Yamato before they leapt forward. Speak for yourself, that's music to my ears, retorted Anko with a bloodthirsty grin as she moved forward. Within seconds the two sides clashed, battling in the air over the unconscious audience members and between the stands at high speed. The battle was of course not easy for the Kanoa Shinobi, who had to watch where they were fighting and had to use their jutsu wisely, for fear of missing an enemy and hitting a civilian. But despite the complication of having to fight their enemies and protect the civilians at the same time, the Kanoa Shinobi proved to be more than a match for their adversaries. During the battle Kushina deflected several shuriken that were throw at her by an Otonin with his katana, while at the same time making sure that they hit no one. Once the shuriken had been dealt with, the red-headed Kanoiki swiftly made her way over to the enemy shinobi before he had time to defend himself and slashed his stomach open. After dealing with the Otonin Kushina glanced behind her and noticed another Oto shinobi, not far from her, standing over a Kanoa chun and preparing to stab him with his kunai. Acting fast Kushina quickly raised her left hand up and fired one of her chakra chains out of the palm of her hand. The chain then quickly flew through the air and impaled the Oto Shinobi from the back right when he was about to stab the helpless Kanoa Nin. After impaling the enemy Shinobi with her chain, Kushina then pulled her chain back, with the now dead Oto Nin still attached. She then swung him around a bit before having him crash into another Oto Shinobi who was moving in on Kushina from her right. Once the Oto Nins had been dealt with, Kushina looked over to the Kanoa Nin, who signaled his thanks to her before rejoining the battle. But as soon the Kanoa Nin left, Kushina found herself surrounded by three more Oto Shinobi, two in front and one behind. Unafraid Kushina readied her katana, holding it up with both her hands this time. Thinking he could catch the woman off guard, the Oto Nin behind Kushina moved forward and went to stab her in the back with his kunai. But just as he was about to stab her, Kushina brought her katana down and preformed a backward stab, impaling the masked Shinobi in the stomach. After seeing Kushina killing their comrade, the two remaining sound shinobi moved on the former Anbu captain. Seeing this, Kushina immediately pulled her katana out of the dead Otonin's body and with a series of high-speed sword slashes and moves, dealt with the remaining Otonin's, who fell to the ground dead within seconds. As soon the two Otonin's had been dealt with, Kushina looked around for any more enemies and said, who's next? Before jumping forward to find the fake Anbu or more enemies, whichever she found first. Not far from Kushina, Asuma was busy battling an Oto Nin and a Suna Nin. After taking care of the Suna Shinobi, Asuma quickly jumped backwards to avoid a kunai stab from the Oto Nin he was battling. He then landed on the small railing in front of the stands and preformed three quick hand seals and fired a short burst of fire from his mouth, hitting the Oto Nins dead on and killing within seconds. As soon as Asuma had dealt with the Oto Nin, Asuna Kanoiki suddenly appeared above him and threw a kunai at him. Before Asuma could do anything, another kunai appeared and deflected the incoming projectile. After which a third kunai appeared and hit the kunoiki in the chest, who then fell to the ground. When Asuma turned in the direction of the kunai, he saw that his savior was none other than Kurunai, who smiled at him after she took out a new kunai. Looks like I own you one Kurunai, Asuma said with a smirk. Anytime, the raven-haired woman replied with her own smirk before they both of them leapt off to continue battling. At the same time at another end of the arena, Yamato was busy dealing with several Suna Shinobi. After dealing with his third opponent, a fourth Shinobi appeared behind him and attempted to stab him in the back. But before the Suna Nin could complete the job, he was hit in the back by several Senban needles. When Yamato turned around to look at the now unconscious Shinobi, he suddenly heard someone call out to him. Watch your back Yamato-san. Looking up, Yamato saw Shizun standing not far from him, with her sleeves pulled up, revealing her wrist-mounted Senban launcher, which she had used to save Yamato. Nodding his thanks, Yamato was about to say he would, but before he could he and Shizun suddenly heard some manic laughter coming from Yamato's left and Shizun's right. When they turned to look, they immediately realized the source of the laughter. 
The manic laughter came from none other than the former apprentice of Orokimaru, who was busy killing any Otonin who was foolish enough to confront her. After dodging several flying kunai, Anko quickly used her Senejushu, hidden shadow snake hands, to launch several snakes from herselves and fired them at two Otonins, who struggled to get the snakes off them, but could not. As the snakes wrapped themselves around the Otonin's arms, legs and faces and bit them, paralyzing the two within seconds, allowing the snakes to quickly finish them off. When Anko had dealt with the two Otonins, three more appeared and charged forward. Undeterred, Anko jumped forward to meet them, where she maneuvered past the first one and stabbed him in the back of the neck with her kunai, killing him instantly. Once the first shinobi was dead, Anko quickly pulled out her kunai from the dead shinobi's neck and used it to block a kunai slash from the second shinobi. After blocking the attack, Anko then brought up her right leg and kneed the enemy shinobi hard in the groin, causing him to buckle over in pain. Showing no mercy to the injured man, the former apprentice of Orokimaru finished him off with a strong kick to the face, sending him flying out of the stands and down into the arena below. But as soon as she did this, the purple-haired Kanoiki was forced to jump back to avoid several projectiles from the third sound shinobi. As soon as she had finished evading all the projectiles Anko quickly counter with her own kunai and threw it at the masked shinobi, hitting square in the head and killing him instantly. HMF, Orokimaru really is scrapping off the barrel if he using trash like this to attack Kanoa, I'm just warming up, Anko said to herself before taking out another kunai and going off to find more victims. Looks like someone is having fun. Comment Yamato after seeing Anko deal with the Oto Nins. Yeah, let's not be left behind, replied Shizun before the two of them took off. In another part of the stands, Kakashi was busy fighting several Oto Shinobi, while at the same time making sure that Hinata and Sakura came to no harm. Soon after Kakashi was joined by Gai, who suddenly appeared and assisted the Kopi Nin with the enemy Shinobi, using his superior Taijutsu skill to knock him out. Good to see you guy, Kakashi said as he and the green suit wearing man stood back to back to one another. You too my friend, I've just sent my adorable students to go help Aruka-san and the other teachers in helping protect the students. Good thinking, I was just about to go over and help myself, Kushina said as she joined the two men. Kushina-senpai I am pleased to see you, before I came here, I spoke to Alba-san, who told me that the village is under attack by several giant snakes. Our forces are trying to halt their advance but they are having little effect on the creatures, especially since they also have to deal the large number of Suna and Oto Shinobi who are invading the village. Kushina Senpai, I think it would be best if you were to go out and help them with the snakes, we can handle the enemy here, said Kakashi, knowing that Kushina was the best person to deal with the massive summons. Right, replied the redhead before taking off. Kakashi, I'm worried about the Hokage Sama, but... Let the Anbu deal with that guy, Kakashi said as he knew they needed to focus on the matter at hand here. The Hokage Sama won't lose so easily, besides Sunid Sama and Jiraiya Sama are in there with him, so he should be fine. I suppose you right, Guy replied, although he couldn't help but still worry for the old cage. End Naruto OST Reikiri. On the rooftop. Kukukuku, laughed Orokimaru as he faced off at his former teammates. I must say this truly is an auspicious day. How many years has it been since the four of us were together like this? Not long enough. Sunid spat angrily. Cut the crap Orokimaru, you were never the sentimental type, rounded Jiraiya. Are very true, replied the snake Senan, before he stabbed the kunai he was holding against the sandime's neck into his other hand. This act naturally surprised those watching but before anyone could comment, the snake Senan moved away from his former teacher who then quickly jumped over to his two other former students and joined them if facing off against the last. What is your goal, Orokimaru? I know that you are not motivated by simple revenge against Kanoa, said the Sandime. How true, replied Orokimaru. If I were to put my goal into words, I would simply say that I like to see moving things, as they are boring when they don't move. What are you getting at? An irritated Sunid asked, since Orokimaru loved to drone on about things. Impatient as always Sunid, mocked Orokimaru. Very well, I want to destroy Kanoa, because I am interested to see what happens afterwards. Naturally after hearing this, the two Sanan and the old Hokage frowned, as the idea of destroying an entire village for such a useless reason appalled them. 
in finalist box. Ow, my head, moaned Naruto as he slowly got back onto his feet and held his head in pain, after being slammed into the back of the wall by Temari's wind blast. Damn that fan girl, I'll get her back for that. Soon after getting back onto his feet, Naruto looked over to the others, Hey Yugito-chan, Karui-chan, are you two okay? Fine, grunted Yugito as she slowly picked herself up. Nn, I'm okay, groaned Karui, but that's more than I can say for the sooner bitch once I get my hands on her. That's going have to wait, said Naruto, as he looked around and saw that the two sand siblings were gone. After seeing that both Kankuro and Temari were gone, Naruto went over to Shikamaru, who was still lying on the ground, seemingly under the genjutsu. But when Naruto used the genjutsu kai to free him, the young Nara refused to wake up. Knowing he had performed the genjutsu kai correctly, Naruto's first thoughts were that maybe Shikamaru had been knocked out when he was blasted into the wall. But when the young Senju checked him for any head injuries he saw none. It was then that Naruto suddenly noticed Shikamaru's eye twitch slightly. He wouldn't, thought a now annoyed Naruto as a large tick formed on his head before saying the young Nara's name slowly, indicating irritation. Shikama you, wake up! yelled Naruto as he kicked the Nara in the butt, hard. Ouch! yelled the young Nara air in pain, as he held his sore rear. Naruto you jerk, what the hell was that for? Shikamaru said in annoyance, while still holding his butt in pain. You know damn well what that was for. Naruto said angrily. You were able to repel the genjutsu, like the rest of us. You were just pretending to be asleep. Jeez, Naruto you can be such a pain. I don't want to get involved in this. Let the other shinobi deal with it. Shikamaru you lazy ass jerk, you're going get involved in this fight even if I have to drag you into it. This is our village and we have to defend it with everything we had. Rounded Naruto angrily. Troublesome, muttered Shikamaru, where's Shino, I'm sure he will be more than happy to help you. I don't know he was gone, as soon as I came to, Naruto replied as there was no sign of the young Abaram and he figured that Shino had gone after Temari and Kankuro. Wanting to get into this fight as soon as possible, Naruto quickly took out a food pill from his utility belt and swallowed. Sorry Ka-chan, but I'm going to have to break my promise about not using any more food pills. After taking the food pill Naruto soon felt his chakra reserve replenishing. Once he was back to full strength Naruto turned to the two Kumo Kanoiki. Karui-chan Yugito-chan I think it would be best if you two go to be sensei, this fight doesn't concern you guys. Yeah, I know, replied Yugito who knew Naruto was right, this fight didn't concern them or their village. But even so, the blonde Kanoiki couldn't help but feel anxious, damn it Naruto must be rubbing off on me, I know I shouldn't be bothered with this battle since it doesn't involve us. But I still can't shake this feeling telling me to help. Come on Karui, we need to get to be sensei, said Yugito. Right, replied the dark-skinned girl. Before leaving Yugito turned to look over at Naruto, watch yourself Naruto, and don't die, if anyone is to defeat you, it will be me. Smirking at Yugito's comment, the Senju air just nodded. Don't worry I don't plan to, if I did, my mom would probably bring me back, just to kill me herself for getting killed. Smiling at the joke, Yugito quickly made her way down the stairs to get to her sensei and the rest of her team. Once the girls had left Naruto turned to Shikmaru, let's get to Kushina sensei and the others and try and help. Geez do we have two. Moaned Shikamaru. Yes, replied Naruto, where he then gave the young Nara air a look that told him he had no choice in the matter. Knowing it would be pointless to argue any further, Shikamaru followed after Naruto as they made their way to the stands, all the while silently mumbling to himself. This is such a drag, Naruto can be such a pain, and he's as bossy as Eno, must be a blonde thing. In stands. Currently in the stands Kakashi, Guy and the other Kanoa shinobi were still fighting furiously against the Oto and Suna shinobi who had infiltrated the stadium before the invasion started. After defeating two more Oto shinobi, Kakashi suddenly heard Sakura cry out to him. Kakashi sensei, Gara and his team have left the arena and Sasuke kun has gone after them. That's not good Gara is not someone Sasuke can defeat on his own, he's going to need some backup, thought the copy nin before making his way over to Hanata and Sakura. Hanata, I want you to go over to where the academy students are, Aruka and the other shinobi teachers will be there protecting them, along with Guy's team. I want you to go help them. 
H. H. Hai Kakashi Sensei, Hinata replied, who knew that there was no point in arguing with Kakashi given the serious look he was giving them. Once Hinata had left, Kakashi turned to his female student, Sakura I want you to dispel the genjutsu on Ino and wake her up and then go find Naruto and Shikamaru. But why? asked Sakura not understanding what her sensei wanted her to wake Ino and find Shikamaru and Naruto. Because I have a mission for you, answered the silvered-haired Jonan. A mission, repeated the pink-haired girl in surprise. Yes an A-rank mission, just like the one in Nami no Kuni, which is why I want you all to proceed with caution, as you won't have any backup. Quote. What do you mean sensei? What do you want us to do? I want you all to go after Sasuke and back him up. But why just the four of us, shouldn't I also wake Kiba and Choji up, so that we will have a bigger group? No, with so many enemies here, a group bigger than a four-man team would be noticed too easily. That's why I sent Hinata to Aruka and the others, where she'll be safe, as she is still recovering from her injury from Neji. But how will we find Sasuke-kun and know which way he went? Don't worry, I've already thought of that. Kakashi replied where he then cut his thumb and used a summoning jutsu to summon and pug face dog. Pakan here will help you find Sasuke, now hurry, said Kakashi with urgency in his voice, before leaving off to rejoin the battle. Oh okay, said Sakura still not sure about the dog, but quickly got over it and then went over to Ino and used the genjutsu kai to wake her friend up. Once Ino woke up, the blonde girl was naturally confused over what was happening, forcing Sakura to spend several minutes to explain what was happening and what Kakashi had ordered him to do. When Sakura finished explaining the details of their mission, Ino quickly understood what they needed to. If you two girls are finished talking, we need to find this Naruto kid and his friend, spoke Pakan suddenly, surprising both girls that he could speak. Did that dog just talk? Ino asked in surprise. It did, Sakura replied, who was just as surprised as her friend. Yes, I'm a talking dog, now come on we don't have all day, said Pakan, who was annoyed with how much talking the two girls were doing. Getting over their surprise the two girls slowly followed Pakan through the stands as the battle between the Kanoa and invading Shinobi raged. The two girls did their best to be stay down and remain unnoticed, after a few minutes Ino suddenly turned to Sakura. Why the hell are we even following this dog? Does he even know where Naruto-kun and Shikamaru are? Yes I do know where they are, as I can smell them, and they're close, also I've got good hearing, Pakan spoke suddenly without looking back at Ino. Now unless you want a kunai stabbed in the back by one of these shinobi, you'll keep that trap of your shut. After being rebuked by Pak and the Yamanaka heiress was left quite red from embarrassment. Under normal circumstances Sakura would have been rather amused at her usual outspoken friend being left speechless by a dog. But given how they were in the middle of a battle, she decided to leave it for another time. It was then in this moment that Sakura suddenly noticed a stray kunai out of the corner of her eye, heading straight for her friend. Ino watch out. Sakura yelled as she moved to push the blonde girl out of the path of the flying kunai. But before she could reach the female Yamanaka, a figure suddenly appeared next to Ino and deflected the kunai. Once the kunai had been deflected Sakura saw that the figure was none other than Naruto. Naruto-kun. Ino cried as she jumped on top of the male blonde, forcing him to the ground and hugged him tightly, you saved me. Ino-chan please this isn't the time, Naruto said as he pushed the blonde girl off him. He's right girly, we've got more serious issues to deal with, rounded Pakan. Once Ino got off him, Naruto quickly turned to the two Kanoiki, what are you two doing her, it's dangerous, you should both go somewhere safe. We're here looking for you and Shikamaru, answered Sakura. Speaking of which, where is that lazy ass moron? Ino asked. I'm here, said Shikamaru, as he slowly crawled over to the others behind the back stands. Shikamaru you barker, where the hell have you been? Ino said loudly. Geez Ino stopped being so troublesome and so loud, do you want the enemy shinobi to hear you and find us? He's right now hurry up and fill them in on what's happening, we don't have time to waste, said Pakan. Unlike Shikamaru, Naruto was not surprised to hear Pakan speak. Since he had been talking to talking slugs and toads all his life, so a talking dog was no weirder than anything else he had seen before. Besides, he had already met a talking dog named Kuromaru when he visited the Inazuka clan. Heeding Pakan advice Sakura quickly filled in Naruto and Shikamaru in on what Kakashi had ordered him to do. 
When Sakura finished explaining everything Shikamaru just groaned with annoyance, geez Sasuke went after that psycho, what a troublesome guy, this is such a drag. Damn it, Sasuke doesn't realize what he's dealing with, Gara is more dangerous than he thinks, we need to get to him now. Naruto thought angrily. Alright let's get going we need to get to Sasuke fast. Yay, but first we have to get out of here alive, said Shikamaru, since there was still heavy fighting going around them and the nearest exit was a good bit way. This meant that they would have to travel through all the fighting that was going on in the stands, without getting caught in the crossfire. Don't worry, leave that to me, Naruto replied before standing up and using his superhuman strength to punch a hole into the wall, giving him a way out. Alright let's get going, Naruto yelled before jumping through the hole he made with Paken who led the way. Not wanting to be left behind, Ino and Sakura quickly followed, with Shikamaru bringing up the rear, who was once again mumbling about troublesome blondes. As they left the stands, the group failed to notice a certain shinobi artist shadowing them from a distance. Who had been ordered by his master just as the invasion started to watch over Naruto and make sure he did not fall into the hands of the enemy. Keeping his presence hidden from his charges, Sai followed after the four genin. Standing not far from their position, the fake Anbu bear and several Oto nins watched as the four genin left the stands. Is that the boy that Orokimari sama wishes us to capture? Asked one of the Oto nins. Yes, replied Bear, and if I were to guess, I would say that he and his friends have gone after Sasuke to help him stop Gara. How can you be so sure? Asked another Oto shinobi. Because Naruto-kun is probably the best person to deal with Gara when he is in his transform state, given his Mokuten bloodline limit. That is why we must stop and capture him at all cost, Gara's transformation is vital to the success of this invasion and if Naruto-kun were to stop him, it would be a severe blow to us. Well it shouldn't be too hard since he's still just a kid. Don't underestimate that boy, the fake Anbu said calmly. He was personally trained by the two of the Densetsu no Sanon, legendary three ninja, and received special training from several high-ranking and skilled shinobi. You also all saw with your own eyes how strong he is when he fought the Nibi Jinchuriki. If you were to underestimate him, you would pay for it dearly. After hearing this Oto shinobi remained silent, knowing that he had a point. Soon after the fake Anbu and the Oto nins followed after the Kanoa Genin and stopped them from reaching Gara. At the same time at the other end of the stands, Kuritsuki and Akatsuki were doing their best to stay low and avoid getting caught in the battle that was happening around them. Damn what the hell is going on, one minute we were watching the Uchiha fight that Tsuna kid. The next, someone cast a large scale genjutsu on most of the audience and now the stadium has become a battlefield, complained Akatsuki. Looks like Tsuna has betrayed Kanoa and joined up with Oto to attack Kanoa, and they got the drop on him, replied Kurotsuki. What should we do? The girl's partner asked. We get out of here, this battle doesn't concern us, if we're lucky Kanoa and Tsuna will wipe each other out. Besides we need to get back home and tell Gramps about that Senju kid being able to use Mokuten, he'll want to know about that right away. Right, said the bulky team before the two of them made their way out of the stadium and the village, while making sure not to be caught in the crossfire of the two battling sides. At the same time at yet another part of the stands, Zabuza and his team were busy defending the water Daimyo, who was unconscious and making sure that no stray attacks hit him. Shit, this exam has really gone to hell, muttered Zabuza after deflecting a kunai with his large sword. Zabuza sensei I believe we should take the Daimyo sama and leave this place, said Saito, who used his katana to deflect a stray shuriken. Tisk. Problem with that idea is that he could get hit when we are moving him or worse were mistaken for the enemy by either side, replied the demon of the hidden mist, while at the same thinking how bothersome these daimyos were. If we stay here at least they're more likely to leave us alone and fight each other, leaving only stray attacks for us to worry about. What about the Mizukage sama Saito asked, shouldn't we be protecting her? That's why I sent Haku and Chojuro to her, they make sure she's okay and at the same time find out what she wants us to do, replied Zabuza. Who then knocked away an Oto Nin, who had been sent flying in the Mist Swordsman's direct by a Kanoa Nin. Besides she can handle herself, she didn't become the Mizukage for her looks and she has out to watch her back if she gets into trouble. Not far from the Kiri Nins, Team Kumo was also having a similar discussion with each other after Yugito and Karui joined them. 
Well looks like this is the end of the Chunin exam, muttered Omoi while keeping his head down so not to be caught between the battling Suna, Oto and Kono Shinobi. What was your first clue moron, said Karui as she glanced over at her teammate. Can it the both of you, this is not the time or the place for your bickering. Rounded Yugito before Omoi could make any comment. Agreed, B sensei what do you think we should do? Asked Simwi, since as of right now Kanoa was in a state of war, and they were caught in the middle of it. The logical choice would be for them to get the lightning Daimyo, join up with the Rakage and the others and leave Kanoa as quickly as possible and let the two sides battle one another. At this question the male Jinchuriki remained surprising silent, and thought over his options before coming to his decision. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.